I feel like it's been absolutely forever since I filmed in my room. Put in the comments if you guys remember when I first started vlogs and I'd literally start all of my vlogs here and like plan out all of my like evil plots on my bed. I feel like I need to start doing that again. Those ideas were so much better. There's just something different about your room. Anyways, with that being said, welcome back to Deck the Vlogs. You're in the middle right now of Vlogmas, which has been so much fun just bringing you guys along. My personal favorite season of all time. And honestly, if you don't think Christmas is the best, you're wrong. And I honestly will say that with 100% confidence because I know that there is no greater time of the year than Christmas. Although I would argue that fall is the best season. Christmas is the best holiday. I don't really know. I love everything from August to December and now I'm going on a tangent trying to prove my point. Anyways, I am super duper excited for today's video and put in the comments if you guys did the first one with us. So all together during Vlogmas, we are doing 23 vlogs. So a vlog every single day leading up till Christmas, which is gonna be absolutely insane and absolutely so much fun at the same time. But every other day, we decided that we are going to be doing a devotional together just to remind ourselves of the true meaning of Christmas and celebrate Jesus together and just really learn and grow as a community I love so much seeing you guys in the last devotional video, commenting on each other's responses, commenting what God's showing you, commenting what you got for the message. It feels like a real community on here because it is. So I'd encourage y'all, if you do not, make sure you guys like this video and subscribe to this channel, not just for me, because there's such an incredible family that you will get connected with when you subscribe. Like I have met some of my best friends off of YouTube, literally in my comments that I got together with in person at one of our events we ran into, we became great friends. So make sure you guys follow this family so that we can actually like be friends. Community is so important and that is one of the reasons why I love doing this study with y'all. So for those of you guys that don't know, we are doing the study, The Hope of Christmas. It's on the Bible app because I wanted everyone to be able to get it for free. So if you guys download the free Bible app, and this is not an ad, this is just something I use, um, but I would definitely encourage you guys to read along. Without further ado, wait a second, I think I said that wrong. You know what I mean. We are going to be getting into today's devotional. We are on day two. It is called Jesus is Worth the Journey. Now before we get in. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely needed to reread the story of Jesus before in Matthew chapter one and two because I needed a refresher. So I'm going to be giving you guys a quick refresher so that we're all on the same page and kind of know what's going on. So basically what's happening is there were three wise men in the story of Jesus's birth, right? You know, Jesus was born of a virgin and she was already engaged to this man, Joseph. And when he heard that she was pregnant, he was like, yo, I don't want to get married to her. So I'm going to like divorce her in like secret because I don't want to embarrass her, but I also don't want to be married to her because it's looked really bad upon. But then an angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, no, like that is God's baby. Like you need to marry this woman and book it out of Jerusalem to Bethlehem so that we can have this child who is going to rule the world and save your sins. So the next day, Joseph did not divorce Mary and he obeyed the angel of the Lord. Now flash forward to Jesus's birth. So when Jesus was born, a star appeared in the sky and there were three wise men from the east who traveled miles and miles. I mean like so far guys, all the way to Jerusalem to find out where this Messiah, this child of the prophecies was born. And when they got there, they met King Herod, who was the ruler at the time. And he was a very jealous king. Like he wanted nobody to step on his toes. He wanted nobody to come close to him. He wanted to be the only ruler. And when him and his officials who had no idea about Jesus's birth or that the star was even in the sky and existent, heard what the wise men were saying, King Herod plotted an evil plot and said to the wise men, yo, like, I don't know where he is, but when you find him, can you come get me so that I can go worship him too? But really he wanted to kill them. And the wise men later found this out when God revealed to them to not go back, right? So they didn't go back. Jesus was born. The wise men found them, poured out all of their sacrifices on him, had a great time. But when King Herod saw that the wise men did not come back, he ordered all of the male children under two years old to be completely murdered because that is how evil and jealous he was. But God kept Jesus safe. He kept revealing Herod's evil plans to Joseph and kept directing him on where to go so that Jesus was safe. Now that we have a foundation laid, we can kick it off in the devotional. Here we go. I hope that made sense. Comments if it did. Matthew 2, 1 says this. Jesus was born in Bethlehem during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. So 
it cool makes more sense now now that we have a foundation and now Jesus is worth the journey searching for truth isn't a part-time job it takes everything that you have the wise men teach us that in the Christmas story the wise men are willing to go to any length to find truth Matthew 2 1 says that when Jesus was born some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem we can assume that the wise men traveled many miles from the far east to the Middle East at a great expense to find Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which is just six miles from Jerusalem, so six miles from King Herod. At the time of Jesus' birth, Jerusalem was a spiritual center of the world. All kinds of spiritual activity was taking place in Jerusalem. All of the major religious leaders of the world were in Jerusalem, but none of them were seeking Jesus. So they were all there. There were like miracle signs and wonders all happening, yet there was a star that rose in the sky because the Messiah of the prophecies was born six miles away, and they didn't even notice. They weren't seeking Jesus. Only people on the outside, the wise men from a completely different culture, were looking for Jesus. King Herod missed baby Jesus. So did the business leaders of Bethlehem. You too have Jesus right in your midst and can still miss him if you're not looking for him. It's so true. But the wise men looked for Jesus. They were willing to make a four to five month trip across the scorching hot desert to find Jesus. They were serious about seeking God. They were willing to do whatever it took to find him. That's wise. It's what we need to do as well. We can't let anything get in the way of our search for God. It's the most important achievement in the world. Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl that is so valuable that we will sell everything we have to get it. Wow. It seems the wise men from the east understood this long before Jesus even spoke the parable. The wise men were willing to give up everything they had ever had to worship Jesus. They were willing to give up the comforts of their homes for a long, tough journey because they had the right motive in searching for Jesus. They wanted to worship him. What would you give up in order to worship Jesus? That is a really big question right there. Like, I don't know about you guys, but automatically when I hear that, I'm like, dang, like a four to five month journey out of your hometown, off of a star, like what faith is that to see a star rise in the sky? And even if God speaks to you and says, you know, that's the sign that like the Messiah is born, like my son is born, your savior is born. Like what faith is it to not question yourself and like have such confidence that God spoke to you that you literally go for four or five months, leave your family, leave everything you've known, your culture, and like go seek his face. I don't know, that's so inspiring to me. I want a faith like that. And we can have a faith like that. I feel like a lot of times we read these stories in the Bible and we think to ourselves, oh my gosh, that's so cool. They had such great faith. But the only reason God gave us these models to follow was so that we could see ourselves in those stories and realize that he is a rewarder of great faith and that we can have those too. They're normal people. I mean, the only person in the Bible that was great, like honestly, anything but human was Jesus. He was fully God and fully man. The rest of them were just like us. The only thing that made them great opposed to the other people in the Bible was their great faith. And we can have that too. You can have that too. All that it's going to take is for us to be asking God, what do you want me to give up? Because living in this world, I realize we're constantly sacrificing things, right? When we're following what the world wants, when we're partying, we're drinking, we're doing all of these things. We're like having sex with people. We're like, we're sacrificing our relationship with God. We're sacrificing holiness. We're sacrificing purpose over our lives. We're sacrificing God's protection because he protects us when we're under his will. We're sacrificing joy that's not circumstantial, peace that surpasses understanding. We're opening ourselves up to like what the enemy has and that's sacrificing everything that God has for us. But on the opposite side, when we're walking with God, we sacrifice everything that the flesh wants. So it's just a balance of what's more important to you. And if you guys are anything like me, I want to store up treasures and I want to please the one whose opinion of me never changes and whose kingdom is everlasting. I don't want to build up treasures here on earth or I don't want to do things to live in the moment. You know, we're constantly told, live in the moment, like get everything that you want. Like now you do you and all of this stuff, which is completely contradictory to like what God tells us to do because he knows that we don't live for like this earth and what we can get here. But that when we're doing things for the kingdom of God, we're building up treasures and an eternal kingdom that does does not ever hate. Like, I just think that that is so cool and such a perspective that I didn't know for a long time and I feel like so many people don't know the reality of. And once you do, it completely changes the way you look at life and look at things. And when you have to sacrifice, you know, going to parties and drinking and doing all these things and we've all lived it, I've lived it, you realize it's not even really a sacrifice because what you get in return and the freedom that you feel when you accept Jesus into your heart is so much greater. It's like honestly an honor. It's not even a desire of you to do those things anymore because you're not 
not your own, like the Holy Spirit has entered inside of you if you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and is literally transforming you from the inside out to be more like our Creator, pure before His eyes, like how we were created to be. You know, we weren't created to be sinful beings. We were created to be put on this earth and to dwell with God. But because of free will, because of our own sinful nature, like it just came in, you know? But I just think it's so cool that we have the opportunity every single day, like the wise men, to seek after God with our whole heart. And it says, going back to our first devotional, like, when you seek Him, you will find Him. When you search for Him with your whole heart. I would encourage you as I step into it too, to seek God with your whole heart. This week we have both of our events coming up. And by the time you guys see this video, they'll probably be a couple like days away. And we've got Jaywalkers and Chosen and Free on the 8th and the 9th of December. And I'm gonna need God to show up for those. And I'm gonna seek Him with my whole heart because I know that He will. He does every time and He will intervene in your circumstance and in your situation and give you purpose. All you've gotta do is seek Him. He'll give you those answers. He really, really will. He'll show up. But I love you guys. You guys are amazing. I believe God's got such a great purpose for you and for bringing you to this family. So make sure you guys put in the comments what you believe God is calling you to joyfully sacrifice. Everything you sacrifice, he will give you 10 times an overflowing blessing like he does every single time. But you guys are so amazing. I'm so happy we get the opportunity to do this devotional together. Make sure you guys are liking each other's comments, really making this a community that can honor God. And do not forget to like and subscribe to this video. If this video gets 10,000 likes, I will be bringing Carol on the next one, which I think would be really, really fun. All right, I'll see you guys next time.